So this is the new driver from Mizuno, the STG. A small and compact 440cc profile with a very interesting weighting system that provides endless possibilities to personalize the performance attributes of this driver. By manoeuvring weight you can change both fade and draw bias and at the same time adjust the balance towards ultra low spin, optimal launch or a combination of both. It has a new driver face which is 9% lighter than the previous and is supported by Mizuno's Cortec chamber, a technology behind the club face that reduces stress to provide an extra energy source. Now any driver that claims to reduce stress is already a winner in my book. It definitely started off that's weights right at the very back and I was expecting it to launch higher and uh, and be higher spinning but that certainly wasn't the case but whilst they understand how beneficial the adjustable weighting system might be I can't help but prefer a less complicated look on the bottom of my driver and playing winter golf in the UK can only mean one thing it's highly likely I'll be collecting a lot of unwanted additional weight lodged in between those tracks and I do wonder how that might impact on performance. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the weights that we started with were right at the very back as you can see and they're very easily moved but I'm going to put the two weights right at the very front so this in theory should be that real low spinning model. Well, let's just change the ball flight completely. I won't say that I prefer a matte crown over a high gloss because that would become very repetitive. But I do prefer the smaller, more compact profile because I'm old and nostalgia is coming to me. It's quite soft off the face as well, quite an unusual sound. That one again, that's come out of the middle as well. Right, so I'm half a dozen shots in and I said uh, that I'm not gonna make sort of overly dramatic statements in these videos moving forward. What I will say about this is that that weight system is real. The changes that you can make are very, very real and I've seen that out on the fairway. So even at this early stage i would if you're considering this driver you must get custom fit for it it's imperative a long ball you know Yeah, that's a super ball, that's flown off. And that's with the weights back again. Okay, so the first thing we'll go through is some of that dry ball data and uh, it's really quite scary just how different it is. Um, so we've got weight forward, weight back. You can see the two separate columns and two very different sets of numbers. Uh, slightly faster club head speed with the weight back and uh, that's got nothing to do with the performance of the club, obviously. But the areas that are really interesting is just how different we could make that spin just based on shoving what doesn't seem to be a great deal of weight 
uh, all the way back or all the way forward and you can see 1725 below 2000 rpm when the weight was pushed forward and uh, above 3000 revs with the weight back that impacted massively on launch angle um, as you can see and descent angle which follows on but ultimately that carry distance which was um, 20 yards almost of difference so then when we went out on the golf course when i was hitting those balls what did the shot traces look like well the interesting thing was this first shot you're going to see is weight back and um I would, when I say a high ball flight, I would say a normal ball flight. So that's what I would normally expect to see. I've got a nine and a half degree head, pretty much what I'd expect. Um, then we start to move the weight back and what, uh, forward rather. And what you'll see is a massive difference in ball flight, but also a massive difference in the carry. Um, but we've got to consider how much impact that has on rollout. Weight back again. This was probably the best drive that I hit on the day, to be honest with you. It was um, pretty much bang on the line, 232 carry. They're suggested by Shot Trace. I'm not too sure how accurate they actually are. Um, once again, weight forward, you'll see a slightly better carry distance of 220 and a slightly higher ball flight than the previous one we looked at. But then from the same tee, once we shove the weights all the way back, this is what happens. A massive change in ball flight. Uh, and that carry distance, although only eight yards, seemed a lot more than that. And I left this one in on 18 because, um, well, it's a huge uh, carry uh, with pretty much, and I say huge, huge for me, but pretty much uh, an awful swing. And what it does go to demonstrate is that uh, no matter what club you have in hand, it's not going to improve your golf swing. So an important message that maybe I just have to keep reiterating, but I'm pretty sure everybody knows that anyway so this driver for me is very different and it's certainly not for everybody and for me i would say quite honestly even with that weight back it wasn't for me um i wasn't overly keen on the the sound elements of the club and i know again that's not a big deal for a lot of people but for me it just wasn't quite hitting the spot in terms of what i like to hear from the driver uh, then in terms of the actual performance on course it was okay without being spectacular and i think this where this sort of driver excels is in that low spin model which is what it's designed to do ultimately and probably if you go back to those swing speeds which was low 90 mile an hour with driver it's certainly not geared up for people like me who swing the driver a little bit too slow i think to get optimum performance out of it i'm not going to dwell on you've seen plenty of on course and off course footage in terms of that trackman data i hope it's a rounded review that gives you at least some guidelines and if this is the kind of thing if you basically the way i would put it if you if you swing the the, the driver on the quicker side and I, i'm talking about 100 mile an hour plus but if you spin the ball high then maybe there is something in this setup that will get you some optimal numbers. And what I like about it is just that adjustability is very, very noticeable, more noticeable than I've seen in most drivers, to be honest with just how difference uh, or what kind of a difference we can make. And we didn't even start to switch those things in terms of that draw and fade bias. So a very customizable driver and one that, like I said, you've got to get custom fit for if you're interested. Right, a very different review than what we've put out before. So I would love your feedback on uh, what your overall thoughts were hopefully we delivered all the points that you want to find in a review but in a totally different way than uh, what we've done before and certainly what is out there on youtube so i'd love your feedback right that's me done as ever thanks for watching i'll see you all soon